Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use your CX2 to fill out uh, VFR Navlog. So I prepare, uh, prepared a sample VFR Navlog here. The uh, items in blue are information that you would get from somewhere other than your CX2. Here we have the planned cruising altitude, uh, the true wind that you would get from the wind's law forecast, the temperature which also comes from the wind's law forecast, the true course that you would get uh, by measuring the course on your map using a protractor. Variation, which you would uh, copy down from the map also. The true airspeed that you get from your pilot operating handbook. The distance measured with a ruler on your map. And the fuel flow, which you also get from your pilot operating handbook. So that's all the information we need and we're ready to begin. We have our CX2 handy over here, so we'll just turn it on always comes on in calculator mode so we immediately switch to flight mode and we're ready to begin. Now odds are you would have been using your CX2 previously. You probably went through the altitude menu and figured out your pressure altitude and uh, possibly your density altitude earlier in order to uh, facilitate looking up the true airspeed. We're assuming here you've already done that and we're picking it up at the flight planning stage. So. Uh, we're going to choose menu item number four, which is flight planning. And that brings us to the planning uh, menu. We've got six menu items, but we're not going to need them all. Each of these menu items is going to tell you the, the things in the title. So item number one is going to give us the heading. That would be the true heading and the ground speed. So we need that for sure, the true heading and the ground speed. But we're not going to need menu item number two because we'll already have the heading from number one and we already know the true airspeed so we can skip over that one. We will need to use the compass heading. Now here on the nav log I have magnetic heading but we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute when we get to it. We're going to need number four to, uh, to get the time over here and then to get the, uh, the fuel burn we have to go back to the flight menu. So item number five, the ETA, we don't really need it for flight planning. That's more used in flight. When you take off, you enter your takeoff time, it calculates your ETA for you. And item number six, we don't really need that one either. That's just a reciprocal calculator. It can be quite handy at times, but we don't need it for flight planning. So without further ado, let's begin with menu item number one. And the CX2 wants to know our true course. We have it right here. 050. It's redundant to enter the leading zero, but I'll just put it in anyway to demonstrate that you can do that if you prefer. Uh, then we hit enter. And now we need to enter our true airspeed, 134 knots. And hit enter. And then the wind direction, 280 degrees. And enter. And then the wind speed, 25 knots. And enter. And there we are the uh, true heading right down to the last tenth of a degree. I'm just going to go ahead and round that off and call that uh, 42. And we've got the ground speed again to the tenth of a degree. I'm going to round that off and call that 149. So 149 right there. And now we're ready to get the magnetic heading. So to get the magnetic heading, we go back to the main menu and we're going to do number three, the compass heading. So we go to compass heading and you see immediately that the CX2 has already brought forward the true heading. So we don't have to do anything there, just hit enter. Now we have to put in the variation, which is 18 degrees east. So we go 18. An easterly variation is negative, so we hit the plus minus button to make the negative sign, hit enter. Now at this point, the CX2 would like you to enter the deviation from your compass deviation card. But as you know from elsewhere, I'm not a big fan of doing that here. I believe you should allow for the deviation uh, in flight when you set your heading indicator. So what we really want on the nav log is not the compass heading, we want the magnetic heading. So I always just leave deviation at zero at this point. So just hit enter. And here then, even though it says compass heading, in effect this is the magnetic heading because the deviation is zero. And I'm just going to round that off and call that 24. So that's our magnetic heading 24. And we're ready to do the time. So we hit the back button and menu item number four is the time. So we choose four. 
and we have to enter the distance. So uh, this distance is from the last time someone used a CX2. Is, it remembers that. So in our case, we enter N84 as the distance. But notice the ground speed is brought forward for us automatically. So that was really handy. Just hit enter again. And there you are, 33 minutes and 54 seconds. I'm just going to go ahead and write down 34 minutes. I'm just going to round that off to 34. One more item to go on the first uh, legs. We've got to do the fuel. Now fuel is found right under the primary flight menu. So the best thing to do here is just hit the flight button. That will bring you back to the primary menu. And we can see that fuel is item number three. So we choose three. We have three options again. But the one we want, of course, is a fuel burn. So we do want number one. Fuel rate, this would be uh, more something you would do after the flight, where you already know how much fuel you used and you just want to uh, check out the rate. And uh, endurance, not a factor at this point. So we're going to choose number one. And see, we don't have to do anything here with the time. It's brought forward automatically. And even though I rounded it off here, I'm just going to let the CX2 use full accuracy there. So I just hit enter. And I have to, of course, tell it the fuel rate. So that's 7.3 and hit enter. And there you go, 4.1. So enter 4.1 on my nav log. And we're done with leg number one. Now, moving on to leg number two. Many of the items on leg number two will be the same as leg number one. And that is part of the beauty of the CX2. It's going to be really easy to do that. So we click on the flight menu to, uh, to come back to the primary menu. And again, number four for planning. And once again, we're going to go through them in order. So menu item number one, the heading and ground speed. Now, of course, the true course has changed. So I have to enter the new true course, 26 degrees. Enter. But the true airspeed, that hasn't changed. So I can just hit enter. The wind speed or wind direction, that hasn't changed. Just hit enter. And the wind speed, that didn't change either. So just a series of clicks. Simple as that. We have the new heading. I'm going to go ahead and round that off to 16. So 16 for the two true heading. And 139 for the ground speed. So we'll enter 139 for the ground speed. And we're ready to do the heading. So back button and number three is the compass heading and see our true heading is already there so just hit enter and our variation is already there so just hit enter deviation already there and so there you are simple as that compass heading magnetic heading in reality I'm going to round that off to 358 so we'll just enter 358 there and we're ready to do the time so we go back and choose number four so the, the distance, of course, on this leg is different. So we have to enter the new distance, 143 miles. Hit enter. But the ground speed's already there. Enter again. One hour, one minute, 52 seconds. I'm just going to go ahead in my head and bring that together and call that 62 minutes. So that's 62 minutes. And I'm ready for the fuel. So. Remember, always the flight button when you're ready to do fuel to get back to the primary menu. So flight, then fuel is number three. Fuel burn is number one. The time is already there. Even though I rounded it off to 62 minutes, the CX2 is going right down to the second here, which is fine by me. And the fuel rate is 7.3, so I just hit enter again. So that was easy. 7.5 gallons. So. Now you could have several more legs where the wind remains the same, the true airspeed remains the same, but uh, in this case I've got one more leg where I deliberately changed a few of the items, so we'll go through the one final leg. So back to the primary menu, over to the planning menu, heading ground speed. So entering the new course, 5 degrees, and enter the new true airspeed. So I uh, notice that we've descended a thousand feet, so we're going a little bit slower. So putting the new speed in here, 132 knots. And since we changed altitude, the wind changed, so we have to update the wind direction and the wind speed. So we update those. And still didn't take too long. 356.3. I'm just going to round that off to a true heading of 356. And I'm going to go ahead and round that ground speed off 
to uh, 132. There we are. Time to do the uh, the compass heading. So we go back to the compass heading number three. There we have the true heading already there. Variation. Notice it did change a little bit. So change that to uh, 17, negative 17, and enter. I'll leave the deviation at zero. 339. I'm going to round that off to 339. And we're ready for time. So item number four is time. And the distance on this leg is 82 miles. So we enter the 82. And the ground speed is already there. So there you are, 37 minutes and 13 seconds. I think we'll just round that off to 37. And we're ready for fuel. We're almost done. So remember, back on the flight menu to come back, there's fuel, number three. Fuel burn, number one. Time is already there. Fuel rate is already there. Just hit enter. And we're done. 4.5 gallons for that leg. And the nav log is complete.